All right. So today what we're going to do is we're going to look at inverse normal distributions. In other words, we're going to look at distributions where you don't know all of the information to put into your calculator. So th let's just remind you of in the calculator, you needed a lower limit, you needed an upper limit, you needed a standard deviation, and you needed a mean. Yeah? So with inverse, you're going to have one, and unfortunately, or more of these are missing. Okay? So you're not going to be able to use the normal distribution just plugging it into your calculator and then, and then push enter. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to approach it in a slightly different way. Okay? It's still going to rely on your calculator, but you're going to have to find another value first, and then we're going to use an equation to get to the answer. But again, you can use the equation solver on your calculator to solve the equation if you want to. You don't even have to solve that by hand, right? So what we're going to do, if we have one or more of those missing, we're still going to use our calculator. So you're still going to go to menu, stats, distribution, normal, right? None of that's changed. But remember where we hit, last time we hit NCD, and next to that, there was another but button that said inverse normal. That's the one we're going to be working with now. So everybody pull out your calculators and see if you and get to that particular point for me, please. When we reset them too. So once you get to that point, the default is list. You do not want list. You need to change it to variable. So that's the next key so you'll hit is you'll just change that to variable. It's one of, the, one of the things on the bottom. Just hit the right one. Okay. To change to variable, that was an F2 key, right? All right. Now, you're going to see a different screen than we did before. You don't have these choices, lower limit, upper limit, right? You still have a sigma and you still have the mu, but you don't have the rest of it. Instead, what you're going to see is you need to determine the tail that you're using, okay? And that tail is determined by your shading. In other words, where are you looking, okay? So if you have your, in, your normal curve and we're looking for stuff over here, what tail have I just shaded? The left. the left one, yeah? If you're looking for stuff over here, that's the right tail. Now, there is never a time you're going to use center. You're always going to use either right or left. And you don't know any values because that means you don't know those values. You don't know the boundaries. But they're going to give you keywords to tell you where, whether you need to shade up or down. They're going to say that blah, blah, blah about this question. They're going to say, um, what, is the, what is the limit if fewer than 10%? Well, fewer than 10% means smaller than 10%, right? So that's that little tail off to the left. More than 40%. More than would mean you're shading bigger, so that's to the right, yeah? So you're just going to have to determine... Which, sh which side your shading is going to go on, and that'll tell you which tail to use, right? That's one reason I was making you practice that shading, so that you know exactly where your data lies, okay? All right. Two question? So determine your tail by your shading. Here's the next part. They may give you a mean... They may give you a standard deviation. They may not. But anytime you're doing the inverse, it doesn't matter if they give you the mean and the standard deviation. You must not use it. You must use the normal, the standard normal distribution. Must use standard normal distribution. 
which means that you're going to use a standard deviation of one and a mean of zero. Remember we looked at that chart where I told you that's the standard normal distribution? You have a mean of zero and then each standard deviation is one apart. So you're gonna put in your tail, you're gonna put in one for the standard deviation and zero for the mean. Okay, now there's one more part that you have to enter. It should say area, okay? That is another piece that they may or may not give you. Sometimes you'll know it, sometimes you don't. So there are pieces of these you're not gonna know. So the last thing you're gonna do is the area, and that's simply the percent they give you. Okay, enter the, you'll enter that area. Okay, so fewer than 10% of the students. So 10% is the area that they want. Okay, exactly. If you can't put it in as a, de as a percent, you have to put it in as a decimal. But the area is the percent that they're gonna give you. And we're gonna look at several of these because you need to get used to it. Now, once you do that, you're not gonna get your answer. You're gonna get the thing you're going to need to be able to get your answer. Okay? So the calculator keystrokes will give you that part. Then, okay, all right, this way, we'll just put this. In. This will give you Z. All right, okay, or Z if you just have to, if you can't stand it. All right, I can't say Z, just sorry. Just seems so odd to me. Y'all gonna have to get used to translating. So you'll use this equation, which is funny because if I say in Z, I don't say that, I say in Z. It's a sickness. Oh well. You've noticed, you've noticed that I'm insane. All right, here's the equation. Z is equal to So, x minus mu over the standard deviation. Why does the mean use this equation to give you? So use this equation, right? And this is going to solve it and give you your answer. Okay. Which is z? Well, no, you're going to find you're going to find the z. Look at that. You're going to find the z from your calculator. That's what your calculator is going to tell you. Okay. So all you're going to do, so just plug in what you know and then solve. And you can solve it by hand if you want to, it's fine, it's an easy equation to solve by hand, it's no big deal. Or you can use solver on your calculator to solve it, I'll show you both ways. All right? If, if algebra scares you, then you can push buttons. Makes no difference. Push buttons, okay. All right, so let's look at, let's look at a couple of them to uh, get you geared up. So in these from Education Perfect, do not pay any attention to how they've worked them. We're just going to go straight to the problems. And they've broken it up into two sections. The first section, you're always going to be looking for your X. And so that should make your life a little easier because you can practice just looking for the same thing instead of bouncing around. And then next time we meet, we're going to do the same, but we're going to be looking for our standard deviation and our mean. And then... We will definitely, definitely look at one where you have to find both because it's usually on the exam, so we'll see. All right, so let's just look at their example and pay no attention to how they did it. Here we go, let's see. Here we go. A cafe finds, ladies, a cafe finds that the amount of caffeine in a cup of their tea is normally distributed. So we know it's normally distributed. With a mean of 45 milligrams, and a standard deviation of eight milligrams. So just like last time when I asked you to make your list, we had, remember last time we had a lower limit, we had an upper limit, that's supposed to be a U, an L, I mean. So lower limit and an upper limit, we needed a standard deviation and we had a mean, right? Here, we're given a mean, 45 milligrams. We're given a standard deviation of eight, but then it says, find the minimum expected amount of caffeine for 90% of their cups of tea. Area. 
So yeah, that's not an upper and a lower limit. That's an area, a percent. So do you see how easy it is to determine that we need to use inverse, right? We don't have this, so we have to use inverse. And if you think about 90% of their cups of tea, think about where that is. 90%. So that's all of this stuff, isn't it? And leaves off the top 10%. 90% is everything from the bottom up, right? So it's going to be a left tail. Right? 90% of it. That's the same as saying... Not 10%, right? So 90% of your data. So that's a left tail. So go to your calculator. You're going to put in, and 90% is 0 0.90, right? Change it to a decimal. Okay. So you're going to put in the tail, left tail, area. Now, am I going to use 8 and 45? No. What am I going to use for my standard deviation and my mean? One and zero. Be careful. Yes, you always do that. Always. And for the calculator. Okay? So it's a left tail. Right? There you go. Okay, so can somebody tell me what you got then? One point what? Okay. Now, z-scores are usually rounded to two decimal places. So we would just say that our z is 1.28. Okay? Now, you're still going to get rounding error from what they're doing because they're going to use the chart. So sometimes your numbers can be slightly off from theirs, but don't panic about it. Okay? So now we know our z-score. We can plug that into the equation, and the equation is always the same, and it's on your formula sheet so you don't have to memorize it. Okay, so we can just plug that, the information we know into that, into that formula and then solve it. Okay? Does somebody write down these numbers for us? Standard deviation of 8, mean of 45, z of 128. Okay? Because I'm just going to go to some notebook paper. No, I can, I can actually solve it. I can, I, I've got it, actually. I just, I can do it with that. So z is equal to x minus mu over the standard deviation. Now, when you, do, when you put in your mu and your standard deviation now, we're talking about the actual numbers they gave you from the problem. The only time you'll use the standard normal distribution, the 1 and 0, is when you're putting your calculator. Now we're going to go back to the numbers they gave us. So for z, we have 1.28. We don't know our x. That's what we're trying to find is that boundary at 90%, right? Minus our mean was 45, and our standard deviation was 8. And again... You can solve this by hand, or you can solve it using solver. Makes no difference to me. Okay? On your solver, uh, let's just talk about how to find it. To use solver, again, go to menu. Then you're going to find the, the thing for equations. Five or eight, I can't remember. Eight, okay. So eight. Thank you. And then you're going to hit solve, which is F3. Thank you. Once you do that, it's just going to say equation like this. Okay. It's easier to solve by hand, but it doesn't matter. I guess it's odd because you have to do math. Okay. Now, let me, let me walk you through those. So here's how we're going to enter this one. We would put in 1.28, the equal symbol is shift and then the dot, the, the decimal point. Shift and then decimal point. We'll put in an equal symbol. Do you see it? Okay. All right. So do shift dot for the equal symbol. Then the next thing we have to do is a fraction with two pieces in it. So that means you cannot do this without using <coughs> the fraction key and you're, gonna have, and you're gonna have to make sure you do the others. Remember the fraction key is that ABC key? So after you hit equals, hit that ABC key and it should open up some boxes for you to type in a fraction. 
Did it? It does that little like. Oh, it puts a little. Okay, let me look on your calculators and hold on. Okay, so just so just ignore that fraction. Just what I just did. Just remember that a fraction bar means divide. So we'll just put it in as brackets. So you'll put x. Do you see x on your on your, so open up a bracket? Do you see x on your keyboard? It's right under your that red key. This is where your x key is. Oh wow. Do you see it? Yeah. Okay. So put in x minus, and in this case our mu is 45. Close your bracket, then hit divided by, and then put the 8 in. Okay? You got to you have to have brackets otherwise it won't give you the divided by part. I'm definitely not. Okay. Sorry about that. 90% of it. Here's 90% of it. So in other words, listen, listen. In other words, cut off 10% of it. Right? We want night we use the wrong side. We should have used the right tail. That's my problem. Sorry about that, guys. Okay. Now you can play this recording and make and know what a, an idiot I am. Oh well.